why don't uh, we can each uh, just do uh, some quick, uh, really quick introductions, and then I'd love to uh, quiz the. I'd love to quiz the room a little bit. In fact, my question for the room is, and if you'll, let's get really active on the chat box. I want to know um, how long you've been in the business and how long with EXP. So just some really quick typing so we know who's here. Great question. All right, all right. Okay, good, nice mix. New, not new, middle, six months. Okay, da, 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 okay. Good, good, good. Real new mix. How about who in this room has had some sort of relaunch or restart in the real estate business at some point in their career? And what was that? You moved or you you went from leadership to production or, you, yep, different area or a new broker, became the broker. That's definitely a, a relaunch. Uh, left a certain room, moved, moved, new city. Da, 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 da. Okay, maybe went from a team and then you went solo. So there's all sorts of reasons. Cheryl, how many times have you had some kind of a, a, a start over or do over or relaunch in your career? Yeah, that's a good question. And I, I'm like Heidi Rose, 20 year in the business and three years with EXP. I probably had a half a dozen pivots over the last 20 years. Six times yeah. I would say. So our numbers match up beautifully. So um, 20 years and three years with EXP. I feel like we should high five at, at this point. Uh, so just uh, just a little qualification uh, for those of you uh, in in the room. Just a, like 15 seconds uh, on me. 20 years business. Five of those five of those years I spent as the director of training in the largest real estate office in the country. Uh, I, I, uh, when I left that position, I relaunched my real estate business and that was about three and a half years ago. So that was a restart. So that's fun uh, to really kind of start over. Um, and kind of in that process, I, or even since then, I've published a couple books that are uh, designed to help realtors. Some of you uh, may have seen or heard about my book. I push it out there. It's called Success Faster. Um, actually, the latest one is Success Faster on Fire Hot. It's on Amazon, but it's all designed to help realtors push through to the next level. So I love this topic, next level. Daryl, what about you? Uh, Julian, thank you for that book, I, Success Faster. I give it to every single person that, that's new that comes into my RevShare group. So I appreciate that, and I know they do too. Awesome. Uh, so, so, Julie, my experience is I came into the business as a, a property appraiser 20 years ago, quickly got my license, and um, I, of course, attracted the investor business. So much of my lane in, in, in real estate has been doing the investor business at a very high level, when I partnered with EXP, I was doing, I think, $28 million in a year, um, just my admin and I, 140 transactions in one year. Um, but, but interestingly enough, Q2 of 2018, I shifted my focus to back to general real estate. Um, going back to something that really resonated with me, if any of you uh, listened to ben, uh, Glenn's presentation yesterday from going from pain to purpose, Julie, and there's some similarities too in your book. Um, I just, uh, that, that's EXP, that has been my experience from that pain of the grind to living a life on purpose, which is pretty incredible. Yeah, I think, I think a lot of agents um, relate to that because, um, you know, I just want to acknowledge that it's like not everyone's intention is to double their business. Now, some of you in this room, like type into the chat box. Are you, would you say, are you more in the, um, I definitely want to get to the next financial level in my business? Or are you more of, I'm actually working a little harder on the life balance uh, 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 task, if you will. So, so I'm curious, Great okay, question. so next level, because sometimes next level is just that. Next level is, you know what? I want to get back to the fun and the joy. I'm, I'm, I've been doing the grind and I've been really driving, driving, driving. And, and now I need, you know, I need a little more. So it's really, it's that purpose. Okay, but it sounds like, I, I think we have a lot of people in the room. I think everybody can do the shout out. Oh, look, 
our our avatars went from flat to not flat. It's so good to see you all. I love it. I love it. So uh, so Cheryl, next level. So uh, and and folks, here's the beauty of X Camp. Uh, Cheryl and I, in any of the these X Camp sessions, we have not practiced. We are showing up on stage and this is just real. We are talking and our goal is just to deliver some content that can help you guys do next level quickly. So, Cheryl, what do you think? Yeah, yeah. So, so what are, let's, let's kind of, what are, you know, kind of top two or three things? What, what's the, what is the secret sauce for next level? Let's try that. Well, Julie, it's a good question. And fortunately, first of all, I just want us all to stop, pause, and recognize that with our EXP model, that getting us to the next level is so much easier, right? Uh, when I describe EXP Realty, it's a three-lane highway. That first, that first lane is how we do our general business, what that looks like, which I think you and I are going to focus on today. But when we do that well, Lanes two and three, the agent equity program, the rev share lane. When we do lane one really well, those two things really, really help propel us to the next level, right? Naturally. Def, def, definitely. So it's 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 such a broader approach to our business. It's like, oh, wait a minute. I have more than one uh, financial opportunity uh, in this business and with the EXP model. And that's it's 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 part of the beauty, uh, part of the beauty. One one thing that I like so for next level, one kind of find foundational principle I really like to talk about, and I can only say this is because I've totally experienced this in in my own business in my own life, is is I think we have a tendency to overcomplicate this business, and that your next three five. 10 clients or your next level pipeline. So if you think about your pipeline and what is typically in your pipeline, so next level would be, oh, well, my pipeline is next level. Um, but but the point is, it's like we can think of, well, okay, I need to think of all these different ways to uh, lead generate or all these different ways to add people to my pipeline. My theory is that your next 10 clients are closer than you think. So if we look at what is already working in your business, so where did your last 10 clients come from? Where has your business come from this year? Where did it come from last year? Where did it come from the year before? If you're newer in the business, I have a little homework assignment for you. This week, ask a minimum of six agents where their last 10 clients came from and listen very carefully to their answer. And so my theory is that you will get to your next 10 clients or your next level faster by doing more of what is already working than trying to reinvent something else. Yeah, good point. I'm queen of that, shooting past the target. You're absolutely right. And that sphere of influence that's right in front of us every day all around us MS agents are guilty of not digging into that, not cultivating that at a level as we should be, right? Yeah, the the session in this room that was two sessions before us, they talked, they really talked a lot about uh, database, okay? And, uh, and all of you, most of you are probably sitting in your home office right now. And if you like pick up your phone and just hold it, Okay, don't go on Facebook and don't, you know, I'm going to encourage you to not multitask. But if you pick up your phone and you just physically feel it in your hand and you look at it, I want you to kind of turn it upside down like it would be a cup, like you're trying to pour something out of it. I'm actually doing this right now and you can do it too because no one's seeing you. You're like, like it's a cup or it's a salt shaker and you're trying to shake something out of it. Right now, your next 10 clients are in your phone. So what's the, you know, what's the average commission in your area? Let's do some really simple math. Let's say the average commission is $10,000, okay? Because if your next 10 clients are already in your phone and each of those is worth a $10,000 paycheck, 
right now, that thing that you're holding in your hand actually has $100,000 in it. So for those of you in this room, how many of you in this room would $100,000 more be next level? That next level for you. See some typing. Some of you may be such massive machines out there that you're like, oh, that's kind of child's play. And that's awesome. We can talk about that. Yeah, but for the, I think the majority of realtors out there, if you realize it's like, are you kidding me? You pick up this phone. Now you look at your phone differently. It's like, oh my God, there is $100,000 in my phone. This is the most valuable phone I have ever owned in my, my entire life. And you realize that tactically, you know, ta uh, 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 what does that look like in terms of how do you regularly farm your sphere of influence? What does that well, look like? Yeah, okay, great question. And then I'm going to put it back to you, too, to see what your answer is to that question. Is, you know, if so many of us, the majority of our business is, is a sphere and referrals and past client referrals. It's just, it is a dominant part of the business for, for, for many of us. And so um, my question is like, when was the last time you actually had a meaningful real estate conversation with someone in your phone? When was the last time you actually had a meaningful real estate and a purposeful real estate conversation? And what about the people that are closest to you, your BFFs, your brother, your sister, your mother, your father? What about your spouse? When was the last time you sat down with your spouse and said, honey, or your significant other, and really had a solid conversation about how they can help you and how to best refer clients to you? People are well-intentioned and they want to have your business card, but they need to be trained. And I have found that if we really dial those things up purposely, it can really next level our business. How do you how do you dial into that network, Cheryl? Right. You know, it sounds so simple, Julie. Just ask for the business. Don't forget to ask for the business. <laughs> you know, my approach to my sphere of influence and my business in general really is I really try and come from contribution and just deposit, deposit, deposit. Um, just serve your clients at a very high level. You do the right thing and naturally you get that reputation and you're in the business for years after year after year and things are, are, are just drawn to you. You attract those things. So there is there is a little bit of a grind. You know, how do you get the rocket ship off of the ground? It takes all the energy and there's some pain in that. But at some point, you don't have to work that hard because the referrals, the repeat business, all of that just starts coming back to you, doesn't it? I love that. Yeah, the rocket ship. It's a heavy rocket ship, but, but, it's, but it's a rocket ship. And, uh, um, here's, here's, a, here's one thing I want to throw out. Um, and, I'm, and I'm curious who relates to this in the room. About 30% of my business comes from referrals from other agents from around the country. I live in an area, so notice both Cheryl and I, notice what we've done to our names above our heads, right? Notice what we've done. Well, we've done that on purpose because I want everyone to recognize that I'm in Austin, Texas, and Cheryl wants people to recognize regularly that she's in Tampa Bay so that we're top of mind. And so there's there's one avenue where you could dial up your business to the next level to say, wait a minute, I never even thought about lead generation lead generating with other realtors. So think of your city. This is next level. Think of your city and where are people moving from to your city? Okay. Hey, Julie, you're very lucky in that and other uh, other attendees here from Florida and Texas we're seeing a lot of influx right there's a lot of business coming around people are moving <laughs> they're moving throughout our country and it's great to be on this national platform for referrals good point yeah so you can uh, you can build that um, but I would I would I would recognize uh, uh, recognize I would recommend uh, just being purposeful with with that. And so 
building relationships with other agents, volunteering for things within like within workplace. Maybe you're involved with Power Girls. Maybe you're involved with the Veterans Network. Maybe you're involved with the South Asian Network. What network are you involved in? What if you're really involved in your state group in workplace? Because for most of us, uh, people will move to our city from other cities in our state, right? So what if you're really taking a leadership role and really meeting agents around your state, whether you're in Ohio or Missouri or Washington state, and you're very purposely putting yourself out there so agents know who you are, that can next level your business. Yeah, great point, Julie. The referral network that we have here within uh, EXP is pretty powerful. Um, you know, and after the sphere of influence, I think that the um, the sphere of influence being number one, if worked properly, you're going to get the most amount of transactions out of your sphere of influence cannot be overlooked. Next to it, in my experience, Julie, been farming, and you know, yes, geographical farming, but also farming of particular communities, whether it's a community of um, of a hobby you have or uh, communities that are in your neighborhood. Um, what, what, and I know you've got some great points in your book, Success Faster, about farming. What say you about farming initiatives? Um, I, I love, you know, there's a, a, there's a story I love about an agent who is just getting started in her career. And this is, this is a farming response, um, who was just getting started in her career um, at, but between, between she and her husband, they had one car. And so she got started just in her own neighborhood. So if she could walk it, that was her initial market. So that is a farm, okay? So she went all in on her own neighborhood without a car. I love this story. <laughs> uh, and within like a couple years, she was absolutely dominating that market and she probably bought a car. Um, at, at that point, <laughs> which, which, which allowed her, I, I believe, to expand to some other neighborhoods. But I remember her telling her story and that um, she learned very early on in her career that, that it, was, it was a lot easier to do business close to home than driving all over the place. It was easier to be an expert. Um, yeah, easy, easy to be face to face. So when you think of farming, I don't want you to just think of, oh, I need to send a postcard once a month because that's now that has value. I, in fact, I got a listing appointment just the other day by sending a postcard in my own neighborhood. Um, and it, in fact, it's the only neighborhood I farm in my area is my immediate neighborhood because I don't want someone listing in my neighborhood without talking to me first. <laughs> um, but but if if you're just talking about mailing, that's old school farming. Because new school farming is getting involved, going um, um, being part of the HOA. Um, every Saturday morning, going to garage sales in your neighborhood, volunteering at the school, and doing the mailings, and 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 um, doing as many open houses as you can. Uh, in that neighborhood, even if there's someone else's listings. So they're, so, so, so for farming, so think of farming. Well, think of this with next level. Think of something that you like in your business or that you're good at in your business or where business is already coming from. And just take that one piece of your business and say, well, wait a minute, what would it take me to next level my own neighborhood or to next level condos or to next level for sale by owners or to next level my iPhone and my referral database because each of those is a is a next level business exercise and you start adding those things up with you being super purposeful with the next level and it it's going to add up. What else do you have, Cheryl? 
Oh, I'd like to expand upon a little bit on the farming. As the resident realtor, there is no one better to sell your neighbor's home for the highest possible price, right? You have every interest in keeping the market values up in your community. Um, so, so what else do we do uh, when, when it comes to farming? You're right, getting involved. You have bunco groups in your neighborhood. Um, any type of social outlets are awesome because that's where you show up as a person, right? And you attract the business. But um, what are some other things that I've done in my, in my particular neighborhood? The very last day of school, I sponsor a snow cone truck um, for the kiddos, which is a huge hit. Uh, we've got the holidays coming up right now. Um, Julie, that, what are some things that your, you've seen agents do for Thanksgiving or Christmas? I have a fun Christmas idea. Uh, get, what's your Christmas idea? Well, just hire Santa. Ha hire Santa. Do do have it. You know, whether it's an open house, a vacant listing um, in your. I've done it in my home or in the clubhouse. Hire Santa. You know, have a little goodie bag. Advertise it on social media and have those families come out. Get to know them. Let them get to know you. That you are that that, that you are the resident realtor and you care. You're there for them. The big hit. All right, I like that. And, and some people have some, you know, of course, there's some limits in, in some area. You know, we're, you know, we got the COVID thing going on this year. And so there's some things that we're doing this year that are different that we maybe have done in, in years past. Somebody said, uh, please talk about sphere of influence next leveling. And, and with that, you know, I, I can't emphasize enough that, uh, well, how do I say this? I feel like I spent too many years in my real estate career where um, I thought my sphere of influence would come to me. I was passive with them. You know, I'm likable, I'm social, I'm around. Uh, certainly they're watching my success on, on Facebook um, and they'll call me, you know, uh, they'll call me when they have a real estate question. Um, then you learn real fast that that's that is not next level at, at all. So, and I know that this is simple, but I realized that for, for me with, with next level sphere of influence, I needed to be unapologetically uh, promoting myself and my business, unapologetically promoting myself and my business. And when I started doing that, people paid attention. So when I'm making calls to sphere of influence i'm not calling for something social i'll call and say hey i have two questions on his business one is personal do you have a minute or i'll text them hey i need to run something i need to run a business question by you real quick do you have a minute right and i'm just being really purposeful with it and 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 it's not a one-time thing um so just really driving it uh, so somebody said, uh, send out cards. I've never used that, but I certainly, I have some realtor friends who, who use that, uh, personal notes. Um, I have, uh, I know a lot of realtors who really drive um, interaction on Facebook. And I know Facebook can be love, hate, but Facebook is a tool in our world. And on Facebook, uh, you, you want to like comment on everything, but the for, for business purposes on Facebook, really the goal is to be able to have a private message or a phone conversation with somebody. So what can you do to engage people on Facebook so that they're engaging with you? And there's just some really, really strong techniques out there to level up. What else do you have, Cheryl? Uh, for sphere of influence, it's a very good question because there's so much gold to 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 cultivate in there. Um, you know, for anybody that's looking to go deeper with their sphere of influence, I would encourage you to uh, follow Hank Avink and his 36 to Life program. Um, so he's got a, a perfectly uh, mapped out path to how to effectively use your sphere of influence. Because if you're like me, you have you have hundreds of people in your phone. You can't effectively approach 100 people at the same level, right? So his 36 to life, the premise of it is that you break down your sphere of influence. So you pick your top 36, where are your, your biggest fans, those that are likely to support you and your business through referrals. And 
make a Facebook list with those 36 people and really keep tabs. You know, if you're going through, you see that somebody had a baby, then you send them a onesie with an EXP branded, um, with, with some type of EXP branding. If the, they've lost a parent, get on the phone and call. So serve those 36 as a, at a level that you couldn't possibly treat everybody, right? Quali quality over quantity. Yeah. That 36 yeah. life for like has it. helped a lot of people to get to the next level. Hank Avink, A-V-I-N-K, and he's got a program called 36 to Life. I'm sure he's all over workplace. I'm sure if you can just search 36 to Life or Hank Avink, A-V-I-N-K, I'll put it in the chat. Yeah, Hank is pretty awesome. <laughs> Yeah, um, there's another guy. I want to I want to say a couple a couple things, and we have about 15 minutes. Um, uh, I want to throw a couple things out there. There's a guy that I follow, and he's really become a friend of mine. His name is Jeff Talbot, and and it's Jeff with the G E O F F, so like G off Talbot, um, and he has really some amazing, uh, I think, uh, Facebook uh, strategies uh, for agents, and he's not with. The XP actually is not a practicing realtor, so all he does is some Facebook techniques, and and um, uh, I really like him. The other thing that I want to uh, I want to point out, um, and and this is somewhat changing changing topics, but but this is next level. I want you to think of the extent to which you are really running your business like a business. The extent to which you're actually really being a good boss in your own business and having some solid uh, uh, discipline and accountability around that. And what I mean is this really simple concept. And the concept is, is that we are in the business and you can even like write this down. Um, Daryl, you've got some background noise going. Okay. Um, write this down. This this, this is your job description for every one of us in here, whether you're whether you're just getting started or you've been in the business for 20 years or whether your goal is 2 million in sales or, or 32 million in sales. This is your job description. This is your shortest job description is that and you could write this down. I am in the business of having conversations with people about real estate. I'm in the business of having conversations with people about real estate. So if that is your job description. If you're being a good boss in your own business today and tomorrow, and this week and next week, you can ask yourself the question every day, how many people did I have conversations with about real estate today? Now, uh, when I say that, I'm not really talking about your current clients. Unless you're asking them, hey, who else do you know who may need my services? That counts. But did you have, how many, even halfway lead generation conversations did you have today, yesterday, the day before, this week, next week, et cetera? And that can be, that's our, it's the lowest common denominator in, in our business. So there's, so if you want a next level, I would say, I would say, whoops, sorry. My, that's my phone going off. Sorry. Um, if you want a next level, it's like if you want more money in the bank, just have more conversations. And if you let that be the driving factor, if you let that be the driving factor in next leveling your business every day, that will help you be a better boss. We've got, we have about, what, what do we have? We only have, we just have a little bit of time. Cheryl, what, what else do you want to throw out there? Well, you're mentioning, mentioning more conversations, more conversations with your sphere of influence, yes. But one thing that has made a difference in my business and in the agents that are coming into my RevShare group and what I'm seeing there is just awesome. Um, but it's being part of those conversations, those, that tribe, that EXP tribe, find your tribe that will hold you accountable to whatever you say you want to do. Um, being your own CEO, uh, you know, we real estate agents as independent contractors, we're lone rangers, right? <laughs> and there's strength in numbers. And I just love that, you know, since I've stepped out into general real estate, that, you know, I'm partnering with people in my RevShare group and I'm learning from them. Even their, their 
for agents, they've got different perspectives, different experiences. And when you're having those conversations and just doing things differently, it really, um, it, 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 there's some built-in accountability that helps you both get to a next level in your business. So find those conversations, seek that out. The EXP platform, Julie, I mean, your coaching program, you know, we, we have Don Loading, um, who's got Build Your Business in Four Weeks. We talked about Hank Avink's program. There are so many resources here within within EXP Realty. Just be just regularly be proactive in being part of those conversations because the more you feed your mind with that good stuff and motivation, Zig Ziglar says it's like a bath. You do you need to do it every day. You know, fill you fill your mind and then you take it out to the world effectively to be a better agent. I love that. There's uh, there's an agent. Uh, there's an icon agent. Um, Oh, she's somewhere in the south. Uh, I forget which state, but there's an icon agent that's that, and, and she's an icon maybe like three years, two or three years in a row. And she said that she still goes to real estate 101 every Sunday evening. And this is an icon agent. And I asked her about that. I'm like, really? Seriously? Like, that's your secret sauce? She said, yeah, because every every time my business felt like it was getting a little flat if I if I just pushed through and and started refocusing on the basics that's that's how my business picked up every single time and I, I love that so next I, leveling is like it's like basics 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 yeah, and we often get pulled off of our business plan in this real estate business, don't we? You know, it, it takes a life of its own, and we need a plan to come back to, for sure. Um, I love that, too. That's so smart, because we just reset. We get back to basics. And if I were getting back to basics tomorrow, what would I do? I would take, take a Saturday, take a Sunday. I would do three open houses on a Saturday, three open houses on a Sunday. Yes, it sounds radical, it sounds extreme, but it works. Do an hour and a half at one property. You will, you will collect enough buyers and leads that you will close transactions. When it dries up, do it again. <laughs> Repeat, rinse and repeat, right? Yeah, I, I like that. I like the idea. So think about this. So so again, this this conversation is next level, okay? What if you did a 30-day push or a 60-day push or a 90-day push? Right now, it's so easy, uh, just for a little framework, it'd be really easy to do a November, December push, right? Because it's just an easy, easy, easy time frame. Um, and you went really intense with your activity. And Cheryl just gave a good example. It's like, maybe you like open houses and it, maybe you typically do. Now I know some of you can't do open, open houses because of COVID, some of you can. Um, and maybe you've been doing a couple open houses a, a month. What if you did 20 open houses between now and the end of the year? You think, well, there's no way I could do that. It's like, well, yes. There are agents that that's exactly what they do in their business. So and particularly if that's the thing that you like, go, oh, yeah, I actually do really like open houses. What would it take for me to do like 10 times as many open houses in a 30 day period and just see what happens? So that 30 day push, 60 day push, 90 day push, and you go like, go really think of, think about like if you were starting grad school, Think if you were starting grad school and it was your first semester and you just had to put your head down and really crank it out that first semester. It's kind of that push. It's a lot of work. You may wear yourself out. You need to tell your family what you're doing so they kind of adjust their expectations in terms of your focus and your availability. It's an intense focus. But if you want to really next level yourself, Try that and wrap it with some accountability. Like how many phone calls are you going to make? How many listing appointments are you going to have? How many doors are you going to knock on? Or how many open houses are you, you know, you know how, many, how many, how many for sale by owners are you going to talk to? And if you tell a few people what you're going to do, and then you ask them to help hold you accountable, 
that raises the bar. That is some next level stuff. Time. Yeah. And Dustin says he ties his reward to, or he ties his to his, his push to a reward. Uh, like we list two homes in 30 days and I take my family out to dinner. That's awesome. Hey, family, uh, family can be a huge accountability. If you have children and you tell them you're going to make, uh, make 30 phone calls this week and you've got it posted on the refrigerator and you tell the kids about it and you, you wrap an award around it for the whole family, guess what those kids are going to do to you this, this week? <laughs> Man, they are gonna they are gonna kick your butt because they are the best accountability partners ever. That is some next level stuff. Wrap your family around your accountability. Get them, uh, get them on that bus. Yeah, that's sweet. And and what you're saying, Julie, too, about the push. Um, Glenn often says, "10x something in your life." Oh, Whether it's, yeah. Even if it's exercise, if you 10x your exercise, it spills out into every single area of your life from relationships to business so just pick something to 10x over the next 30 to 60 days and watch your life change i love that i just i just typed it into my exp con 2020 notes 10x something in your life 10x something in your business and why don't do it right now do it between now and the end of the year, instead of just planning for it, oh yeah, I'm gonna kind of, I'm gonna do that in 2021. I'm gonna, it's like, no, just do it right now. Stop planning yep. and just do. Yep, just do it. Julie, I, I'd really love, and I don't know how much, I know we got pushed back, our time frames got pushed back, so I'm not sure how much time we have left, but I would love, love, love to get your perspective on Glenn's presentation yesterday when he talked about from moving from pain to purpose. I just thought that was so brilliant. What, so what resonated with you with that? Well, we, we're all in that pain at some point, you know, the, 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 the fear of getting started, the pain of being on the hamster wheel of production, pain of only being as good as your last paycheck. There are so many forms that that pain can show up in, right? But when you start seeing, because you're so busy in lane one with your real estate business, and you start getting that cushion of rewards in lane two, age and equity program, lane three, the rep share program, I mean, it really, really is amazing how this, this system naturally pushes you into the place of purpose and out of pain. I, I, yeah, I love it. And I love I love how many conversations are going on right now about about this concept uh, that he put out there. Um, and, and one thing that strikes me is and, and I fall in and out of this pattern in in my life. So maybe some of you in this room will relate to this. But sometimes I find myself saying yes to too many things. And the end uh -huh. result, the end result is that I'm saying no to some things that really matter. And we have to be really responsible for, for that. Some of the most successful realtors I know out there are somewhat boring. And it's because they have this, this singular purpose. They put their heads down. They get the most important things done. And then that leaves a lot more room to be joyful in life to be less anxious, to be less stressed. And that's, and, and I have to, I, the number of times I had to, ha I have had to relearn that. <laughs> it's like, so, so moving from that, that pain to that, ple that pleasure is, is really, for, for me, part of that is managing your life so that you're not compromising the most important things. Right. Yeah. When you say when you say yes to that, you're saying no to something else for sure. Um, but moving on to purpose, you know, it really is great that you can that, that if I choose to that if you choose to you get your your business to a point where you can actually step back and pour into others and help them into business so you can all rise together. Yeah. And the, the, the strength of the group in, in, in this EXP model, the collaboration as a core value is nothing like I have ever seen before. The power in that having the right conversations, the right accountability partners, you know, 
and you can do the same thing as somebody else in another market. Um, you know, find accountability partners that are doing open houses in other markets or any other type of business and um, the, the brain power. <laughs> yeah. That yeah yeah well and it's like and i think this is a big part of what we're talking about because when you when you solidify your business you can give more on in the with the purpose you know with with your life with your family to other agents to things that matter uh because you know we're in business to build our lives right and that that brings us that brings us purpose that is purpose uh, it, it was it was a it was a powerful uh, what forty five minutes or an hour with with Glenn uh, yesterday. What uh, I think we're really up at the end of our uh, of, of our time. It's on the half hour. Are there any uh, any questions? Anybody or what are your what are your takeaways? Anyone you want to you know pop pop something in the chat? What did you hear today that you needed to hear that? that you really think will help you next level? I think sometimes, Julie, going small to go big and, you know, clarifying your goals and your mission, you know, the power in just deciding and committing, uh, that, that one act itself will reset your business and take you to the next level. Good. Yeah, I like that. Okay, yeah, some good comments here. How many open houses can I do before January 1? Just do it. Stop planning. Start my, yeah, start now. 10x. Conversations. Conversations. <laughs> Quit planning and just get doing. Next level, my friends. Next level. Um, I always, I, I like to say um, you are, you know, we're, we really are, we're in a sales business and that's the, that's behind that conversation. So it's like, be a good sales manager in your business. You'll, you can be, eventually you'll be a better COO and a COEO. You'll, you'll get there, but, but be a really good sales manager first. Manage that pipeline, track that pipeline, stay on top of that pipeline. Let that, let those conversations in that pipeline drive you every day. Yeah. Your next 10 clients, they are in your phone. I swear. They really are. That's right. Oh. Get them. Get them. Yeah. Hey, I have a script for you. Next time you're talking to a seller, this is a money script. This is gonna. This is gonna next level your your listing business. Okay. Ready? It's very simple. You might want to write it down, but it's really short. So with any seller conversation, you ask them, "Hey, is this the only property you have to sell, or are there others? Is this the only property you have to sell, or are there others? If you ask." that question every single time you're having a conversation with the seller you can next level your business great tip on that note julie one little random tip there that's good stuff great stuff all right guys all right this was fun thank you julie Thank you, Cheryl. It was fun uh, sharing the stage with you. And thanks, everybody, for jumping in. I hope, hope you really uh, got some good, um, good content here. Absolutely good stuff, like Julie. I look forward to seeing you in, in real life. Sounds good. Yeah, I look forward to that, too. Take care. Right. Bye, all. See you all.